Bitcoin is backed by the largest computer network in the world, and therefore it is the safest cryptocurrency or crypto asset out there. It has not been hacked. The base layer has not been hacked. I don't think any other crypto asset can say that. So, you know, this is like a giant neighborhood watch. You've got a lot of people whose livelihoods have been built on Bitcoin, starting with the miners uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, and they are all watching to make sure that uh, this ecosystem is as robust and Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Kathy Wood discusses Bitcoin and crypto. Kathy has a strong belief in the potential of these disruptive innovation platforms and has made predictions about their future has the potential to grow by 40% each year during this period. Business Cycle Arcs research also calculates the market value of these. The value of platforms is projected to reach $13 trillion in projected to surpass $200 trillion by 2030, according to financial analysis, offering vast possibilities for everyone, particularly investors who participate. Early Cathy is very optimistic about artificial intelligence and blockchain are two cutting-edge technologies that are revolutionizing various industries. They have the potential to transform the way we live and work, offering new opportunities and solutions. The power of artificial intelligence lies in its ability to analyze vast amounts of data and make intelligent predictions and decisions. On the other hand, blockchain technology provides a secure and transparent way to store, and the convergence between the two platforms are set to revolutionize the way in which humans produce plan, invest, and prepare for a prosperous future. Discussing future generations during her conversation with Alice Cathy, described the workings of certain AI companies language models are already in use. To foster prosperous economies and promote life is generally simpler and easier in located in parts of Africa, and at the heart of it, I am interested in Bitcoin and the Lightning Network network payment tools are being developed to embrace and contribute to this new ecosystem in their own unique way. The Lightning team made an announcement that intelligent AI agents would need to cover the costs of their own resources and API calls for application programming interfaces. This is where the Bitcoin Lightning. A network arrives with the potential to make a significant impact. Payments made more affordable, efficient, and convenient payment processing, and lots of things Kathy Wood discusses. So please watch the video to end, and like, share this video, and subscribe our channel, Everyday Finance. Thanks. Yes, so um, we are in print. Uh, uh, our base case is 650000 but that base case was set uh, before the SEC approved uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, and so uh, we are more convinced now that our bull case of 1.5 million by 2030 is the, the, the more likely case. There's no way to shut Bitcoin down. Um, and China tried. And all the activity that was in China just migrated. There's no oversight. It, there's no throat to choke. And it has proliferated to such an extent and is serving a really important role, especially in emerging markets, where people you know, of various countries, if their leaders either don't understand economics or there's corruption and... Um, they lose purchasing power and wealth, you know, to the tune of 50% in a very short period of time. E even this year, Egypt, I think it was the beginning of March, devalued the Egyptian pound by 40%. And so having an insurance policy like Bitcoin is really important in emerging markets. So the bear case for Bitcoin isn't even that it could just go nowhere, but that it will 20x in five years. I mean, you've seen the corrections are violent because mm -hmm. it is so early and so young. Um, the, the corrections used to be 95%. 
Now they're more like 75%. That's a lot. So I don't want anyone to think that it's straight up and to the right mm -hmm. because the corrections are pretty violent. Um, they're getting less so. And I think as Bitcoin moves more into mainstream investing, the volatility will go down dramatically. Uh, so it's not like we're saying it won't go down. Um, it will. It's a new asset class. And there are a lot of, I would say, uh, weak holders. They get in because of FOMO, so fear of missing out. And then they lose 20%, and then they get out. You know, they cut their losses. So that exacerbates moves down. So Bitcoin is backed by the largest computer network in the world, and therefore it is the safest cryptocurrency or crypto asset out there. It has not been hacked. The base layer has not been hacked. I don't think any other crypto asset can say that. So, you know, this is like a giant neighborhood watch. You've got a lot of people whose livelihoods have been built on Bitcoin, starting with the miners uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, and they are all watching to make sure that uh, this ecosystem is as robust and hack-proof as possible. The crypto market recently experienced its most significant three-day sell-off in nearly a year, resulting in a loss of approximately $510 billion since August 2nd. This sharp decline in the crypto market coincided with a decline in equities as the S&P 500 fell by as much as 4.4% during the same period. The market decline has been driven by disappointing employment figures. Slowed growth among major tech stocks has once again sparked fears of a looming recession. Several major companies, including Microsoft and Intel, have reported lower than expected Q2 results. Market leader NVIDIA has also been hit by expectations of an impending rate. In September, there have been cuts that have resulted in a flow of capital back into smaller lagging companies. In mid-August 2023, there was a significant drop in the value of crypto over a span of three days. Many market commentators have also noted a significant amount of selling from a prominent crypto trading firm. This firm has recently offloaded hundreds of millions of dollars worth of assets from their books, according to Arkham Intelligence data. The Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which measures market sentiment towards Bitcoin and crypto, has dropped back into fear territory, currently showing a score of 26 according to alternative DME data. Looking ahead, the crypto market is facing another challenging week, as the losses experienced over the weekend will require a boost from increased spot and derivatives activity from traditional financial institutions. Bitcoin has entered the CME gap, which can only be filled during regular trading hours from a technical standpoint. In his latest post on August 4th, Keith Allen, co-founder of Trading Resource Material Indicators, stated, Let's get back to Kathy Wood interview. Well, there is one thing that the Bitcoin community is watching, and that is quantum computing. But ha as I always say when it comes to risks, half of the solution is understanding the problem. And so now developers are thinking in terms of quantum proofing. Mm -hmm. uh, so th so I, I think that is something we should consider seriously. And I am happy that, you know, the developers are considering it seriously uh, because, again, half the solution. Do you think there are any other drawbacks to Bitcoin? Well, many people would call drawbacks like higher cost than other solutions, slower, um, s slower transaction settlement times. But to us, those are features not flaws, um, because it's part of why it is the safest ecosystem in, uh, in the crypto asset world. So we don't look at those as, as issues. We look at them as really, uh, they've been built into the ecosystem to, to assure its success as the safest uh, crypto asset ecosystem. And how do you see the regulatory environment changing for Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general? 
what has happened, the U.S. has been the worst. Uh, uh, Gary Gensler, as I've said many times, has been a menace to, to our ecosystem and has pushed a lot of innovation associated with Bitcoin and other crypto assets into the rest of the world, so much so that many of the innovators who have moved to other parts of the world, whether it's Switzerland or Berlin or uh, London or Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, they will not deal with U.S. investors even. That's how bad it got. Why? 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 Because is, yeah. they they think they'll be tainted because we are regulated by U.S. regulators. And why are U.S. regulators so strict? Like more than well, any other part. You know, when you're a regulator. Uh, there's a lot of power seeking, and we know the history of the SEC and the CFTC. Ha you know they've, you know they've butted heads over the years, right? Um, and we saw this during the derivatives, the ev evolution of derivatives in the in the '90s, uh, and finally, you know, with I think a Supreme Court ruling, they both regulate it, but regulate different parts of it. Mm -hmm. That is what I think was going on. There's a power struggle in the regulatory ecosystem. This is my purview. This is my purview. And so we may go to the Supreme Court again. I don't know. Um, I think that was the main issue. The simultaneous but more pronounced decrease in Ethereum indicates that there are overall market factors affecting both assets, with Ethereum being more affected. This sharp decline may be attributed to a sudden event. Market sentiment can be influenced by significant news events or other external factors. There are multiple factors that are contributing to the current downturn in the crypto market. The decreasing odds of a Trump presidency, recession fears, a stock market correction and geopolitical tensions are all factors at play. In addition, the yen has experienced a significant increase in unwinding positions. Notable contributors include GX distributions and recent pumps that have trapped fresh longs. The dispersion of altcoins contributes to the complexity, resulting in a challenging situation for the cryptocurrency market. If you learn something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance, and we will meet in next video. Thanks.